Welcome to Mindly Way, where we explore life philosophies to grow and find the right path. Get ready to listen for an inner journey. Miyamoto Musashi was a samurai first, then a ronin, and is regarded as the best swordsman in Japanese history, partly because of his nearly unbelievable discipline. Indeed, he is reported to have engaged in 60 dueling bouts without ever losing one. When he was 13, he engaged in combat for the first time with an accomplished samurai and prevailed. One by one, he defeated the greatest swordsman of the day to claim the throne for himself and himself alone. But Miyamoto went beyond that. He was not only an expert in his field, but also an artist, a shrewd philosopher, and a Buddhist. His writings on philosophy and warfare, along with his search for purpose, became a guide for anyone wishing to lead a virtuous life. Miyamoto Musashi, who penned the Dakota, a set of 21 principles, a week before he passed away in 1645, expressed a strict, sincere, austere, or highly self-disciplined outlook on life. This video will show us what exactly made Miyamoto so disciplined, and how we can apply this knowledge to develop our own self-control. We ensure that our independence is respected, and that our aspirations come true by embracing discipline, a quality that humans have valued and adored since the beginning of time. A disciplined and morally upright populace is essential to the true prosperity of a nation or civilization. In light of this, consider these four lessons on discipline from Miyamoto Musashi's life. Don't just do things because they feel good. Refrain from acting merely on the basis of feelings. Do not seek pleasure for its own sake, advises Miyamoto. On a quest to become the greatest swordsman, Miyamoto traversed the world and even stayed in the creepiest and darkest regions in the late 16th century. If he had been alone with his swords on a chilly night in the middle of a desolate wilderness, it would not have come as a surprise. Miyamoto was aware that achieving greatness came with a cost, which he was willing to pay regardless of the cost. He forewent common interests and the easy route at a very young age in order to stay true to his intended course and concentrate on what he wanted to become. He found it diverting to pursue the dreams of an opulent home, exquisite cuisine, and fantastical belongings. Now, consider a scenario in which Miyamoto chooses to engage in pleasures that are counterproductive to his main objectives. To consistently consume rich, unnutritious meals or to get up late every day. Do you believe he would have advanced far in honing his craft and emerging as the finest swordsman in feudal Japan's history? Most likely not. There are numerous joys in today's world of constant stimulation, but many of them come with a lack of purpose. Furthermore, a vast deal of human history has taught us that the true source of happiness is significance. Instant gratification is more readily available than ever in the modern world. But the sad truth is that indulging in pleasures all the time does not bring happiness. Rather, it can cause extreme cases of addiction and a sense of emptiness. These days, pleasure is so close at hand that it's almost frightening. To receive the quick dopamine rush that we all desire, all you have to do is take your phone out of your pocket. Enjoyment is one of the most precious currencies in the attention-driven economy of the modern world as it is always with you. There is always someone a product or service luring you into false promises of bliss, no matter what you're doing. Meaning and believing in something that genuinely guides your days in a way that can only propel you forward, despite temptation and the pleasures all around you, are the antidotes to pleasure. We must consider those, like Miyamoto, who were able to overcome pleasures and find purpose. Miyamoto believed that time is stolen when we indulge in pleasure, since meaningful work is the only moment when one feels truly fulfilled. For Miyamoto, the satisfaction of accomplishing a significant objective surpasses all other life's pleasures, regardless of how they are compounded. Happiness can only truly come from doing what counts. Just picture yourself feeling proud of yourself if you were able to, say, read for at least 15 minutes every day for a whole year. Visualize yourself in good physical shape after putting in a lot of training. Just picture the day when all of your hard work to launch your business pays off and you start receiving clients on a regular basis. How does the transient happiness that comes from a temporary pleasure really compare to the happiness that comes from achievement? Imagine that the next time you are tempted to reach for your phone rather than accomplishing the less enjoyable task that you truly want to undertake. Concentrate on just one thing. Concentrate on one area and expand your knowledge in it. 
practice and understand the realization that by knowing one way, you know a thousand. As Miyamoto put it, Miyamoto made learning the sword his life's work. When he was younger, he trained carelessly from sunset to morning and consistently pushed his bounds. He actually left his native town when he was 15 or 16 years old in order to traverse the nation, study under the greatest instructors, and take on any fighter with a reputation for engaging in dueling. Unbelievably, he would never fail or lose on this mission. Miyamoto had no fear, no objectives that could be compared to others, and unquestionably reckless training that made his skills unmatched. Miyamoto only learned one art form, but he knew millions of ways to convey it, so his style would be known and feared. The world in which we currently reside is awash with many options and possibilities, something we ought to appreciate and give recognition to. Therefore, one would assume that everyone finally finds the ideal opportunity that fits with their own goals and that everyone experiences fulfillment. But things are rarely that simple in real life. It's true that having so many options can frequently lead to even greater fears. In fact, it happens so frequently that the condition is known as decision paralysis, similar to walking into a self-service buffet where you can pile everything you want on your plate. You initially have an enormous amount of enthusiasm. However, your level of anxiety increases as you think more about what's in the buffet. Although there may be a lot of delectable food prepared for you, a person's stomach can only hold so much food. You so give yourself a little of this and a little of that, all to end up with a large, untidy plate that you are unable to complete, much less adequately taste because everything is blending together while you eat. You're left staring at an empty plate while everything turns into a disorienting, unpleasant muddle in your attempt to not miss anything. And that's just what's occurring in the world today. Individuals are frequently overwhelmed by the abundance of options they come across and find it difficult to sort through them all and concentrate on just one. Many people also believe they can be brilliant at everything, so they try their hand at a variety of skills, but ultimately give up on the chance because they lack the perseverance and concentration to learn something thoroughly. They thus become disappointed and question why they were never able to achieve the level they had hoped for. They accept this as the way things are and move on to the next task, which starts the cycle all over again. We can therefore take this to mean that you can never fully profit from trying new things and possibilities until you really go into them and give yourself enough time to fully understand them. You'll never be able to stop searching for the route that will truly fulfill you. Like Miyamoto, we must allow ourselves enough time to fully comprehend what is in our hands and block out all external noise, no matter how alluring it may seem. Like Miyamoto, we shouldn't be satisfied to understand a discipline's surface-level details when its beauty is deeply rooted. Similar to Miyamoto, we ought to focus on mastering a single ability and find countless applications for it. Of course, after mastering the current skill to the fullest extent possible, you can go on to another one. Just as Miyamoto did when he moved on to writing and philosophy. Remain concentrated. Remain concentrated. In Miyamoto's words, never stray from the way. In contrast to many individuals of high social standing, Miyamoto chose not to pursue the pleasures of a comfortable existence. He could have stayed, eaten well, and slept well in his well-respected family where he was raised. But at a very young age, he left to pursue his goals in the unknown. Perhaps because of his unique perspective, Miyamoto became the person he was and accomplished the things he did. Not even after completing his purpose and becoming extremely well-known did he chase luxury. In fact, he only stayed at the most luxurious locations for a brief period of time before leaving to explore other areas and acquire new abilities. With nearly unbelievable levels of self-control, concentration, and resolve, Miyamoto achieved his goals by maintaining his focus and giving importance to what was beneficial. It's important to remember that while he appreciated fine dining and other luxury when he experienced them, it did not control his behavior. That is Miyamoto's way of life, and that is how history will always see him. A fundamental tenet of Miyamoto's philosophy is that there are two paths in life, one that is visually appealing, satisfies appetites, offers delicious food and delight, and is crowded with people is undoubtedly the preferred option. The other lacks distinguishable detail and is enveloped in an unbreakable mist. 
From a distance, it may seem obvious that the first path is the right one to take, but you are unaware that the second road leads to inner peace, freedom, and meaning. This path is not easy. It calls for perseverance, self-control, and frequently even sacrifices. But eventually, those who chose to follow it and put their needs ahead of their desires even in the face of difficulty will experience life on a far deeper level than those who gave in to fleeting desires and pleasures. For instance, if you decide to set health objectives for yourself because you don't like the way you appear, you will have to choose between eating poorly and skipping your workouts or eating well and following your routine every day. It's acceptable to feel afraid or uneasy when considering the second road because it calls for you to give up immediate gratification in favor of an unclear objective. Fear is a healthy emotion since it indicates that your eyes are wide open. In fact, if you aren't experiencing any worry or fear at all, it's likely that you aren't pushing yourself outside of your comfort zone. Similar to traveling through a desert, you will experience hunger pangs, intense heat, and a sense of futility. However, if you persevere and practice self-control, you will eventually come across the most incredible hidden gems that are right in front of you. All of your sacrifices will be made up for by that, which will also make you smile open your heart, and give you a lifelong understanding. Keep your honor and live a moral life. Miyamoto states, you may abandon your own body, but you must preserve your honor, is the last statement we have for this video. The Bushido, the ideology of Miyamoto Musashi, is the foundation of the essential code of conduct that samurais adhere to. The Bushido is a system of moral principles that one might adhere to in order to lead an honorable and decent life, integrity, respect, Heroic courage, honor, compassion, honesty, and loyalty are the seven main virtues of this ideology. It's safe to argue that the Bushido is responsible for the heroic deeds, noble demeanors, and heroic behaviors that have come to define the image of samurais, even if this code deserves its own entire episode. Honor is listed as one of the seven qualities, but when you think about it, honor is the core of Bushido. The rule of conduct's honor serves as the binding agent for the other virtues. Honor is self-respect, and when you have integrity and honesty in your behavior, you are showing your self-respect. Honor is standing up for what's right, so in these kinds of circumstances, you don't back down instead, you take courageous action. Honor requires that those in positions of authority show compassion and refrain from trampling on the poor or defenseless. And lastly, honor is the willingness to take any and all risks in order to protect the dignity of people you care about. It is the ability to stick by someone through thick and thin. Discipline and honor are two sides of the same coin, and enhancing one frequently enhances the other. Consider the following scenario. You have a standard desk job and have held the same role for a few years. Now that everything is routine and you hardly have to think about your daily operations, you're starting to grow bored. To combat this, you start looking for shortcuts and workarounds, arrive late, and take longer breaks. Basically, you try to give your work as little thought as possible in order to keep from being bored. In the meantime, your coworker, who was hired at the same time and is in the same position, has been taking the exact same shortcuts. However, because she has been using her spare time to create new ideas and tactics, she is being considered for the promotion while you are not. You are told that you lack discipline when you inquire as to why. In your suffering, you make the proactive decision to adopt the Musician method. You resolve to always be on time, put up your best effort to produce high-quality work, dedicate time to exploring methods of work improvement, and generally act honorably, refraining from dishonesty or deceit. The intriguing part is that you're genuinely developing discipline by acting honorably like this. Among the key words in our example are being punctual, doing high-quality work, and acting appropriately. These qualities all belong to consistency, don't they? And isn't discipline built on consistency? After that's over, you're leading a moral life. While it's crucial to maintain discipline and not deviate from the path, it's as crucial to avoid punishing oneself when something doesn't work out. Accept the situation as it is and try to make improvements rather than criticizing yourself. Punishing oneself or diverting oneself with instant gratification are both ways to avoid doing the right thing, and they both waste time and energy. And the cure for our greed, covetousness, and selfishness is to live a disciplined and honorable life.